Dakota Proclamation by Meredith M. Quinn Indian Identity Out of the Puzzle Pick the Indian Historically, there is no question on this continent who the Indian is. In fact, it's quite amusing that they pushed back the date of the Indian's existence at least 250,000 years. And for almost 500 years, anthropologists and archaeologists have each been coming up with a new idea where the Indian came from. Was it the Mongolian, Hebrew, Egyptian, Assyrians, Slovakian, or the Greek? At this stage of the game, I don't believe the Indian would mind any new theory on where he came from, the most recent being the one by the Mormon Church, who now hold ownership to the American Indian because of their Bible. They claim that a white man or a group of white people were the first teachers of the Indian to his culture, and the reason Indians turned brown was because we were evil. Historically, the identity of the Indian is probably the oldest in the world. As far as the Indian himself says, there is no question as to who he is or when or where he came from. But politically, technically, or legally, the American Indian has no identity within the framework of the Constitution of the United States. The Indian of this continent is highly recognized as a nation with a complete culture, but as a sovereignty, it cannot be established. There is no way that the Indian can take his rightful place in world powers, nations, or races. As the Indian problem becomes more popular, there will be an ever-increasing amount of publications that deal with the problems, each having ideas, concepts of what the true Indian is. The most common phrase of these books is, the Indian is a conquered people. The reason for this is to associate them with other minority problems. If this phrase can be accepted by the people of this country, then the Indian can be used to further gain the rights of other minorities, with the Indian getting nothing. The Indian's problem will become a very lucrative business for attorneys who see a long-range program of litigation court cases of his very complex identity. But then the Indian has always been good business for someone because he has no legal or political identity. None of his money has ever reached him. Believe me, the time is ripe to get on the bandwagon because of the complex problem of the Indian, which would take years to untangle and the billions of dollars in grants that will go to the study of him, and not one of the people or their organizations will ever reveal the true, real, legal position of the Indian. At present, the Indian is spending every nickel and dime he can get his hands on, hoping some lawyer can get him some rights or a little freedom. Before I go any further, let me make one thing clear. In speaking about the Indian, I'm referring to the cultural Indian or the reservation Indian, the one who for almost 500 years has fought murder, rape, extermination, embezzlement, intimidation, and termination. In this country, when the word Indian is brought up, we are speaking of two types of Indians, the urban and the reservation. Let me bring you up to date on the urban Indian, for he has a history almost 500 years old. He has many names, urban being the assimilated or terminated Indian, or one who has given up his culture or heritage for the white man's way. He has turned his back on the fight, the preservation. He will no longer maintain his support to the Indian on the reservation, or his traditions. He is hard to detect because he can camouflage himself. Sometimes he appears in a business suit, white shirt, and his hair is combed like the white man 
shouting from the street corner. I'm the true leader of the Indian. Another way is you'll see him with a headband. All Indians should wear headbands because they tell what clan or family he comes from. Feathers, long hair, buckskins, moccasins, medicine bag, and peace pipe. This one has read all the books on Indians written by the white man, so whatever he says or does can be backed by others who have read these same books. Next, he'll copy the traditional Indian ritual implements, read a couple of books on European witchcraft, pull a couple of parlor tricks, then state that he is a traditionalist come to save Mother Earth. He will sometimes have large pictures of past Indian leaders, and to the white folks, this will seem real Indian. What the public doesn't know is that this type of Indian falls into the same class as Indian scouts for the army who murdered former Indian leaders. His opinions often cost the lives of Indians on reservations today. He knows the cultural Indian of the reservation cannot disprove his activities or will reveal secrets which have been the very thing anthropologists and archaeologists want. There is another type of urban Indians. He claims that his family comes from a nation having 80% Indian blood, all dark-skinned. Their names are Spanish-sounding, which is Indian. They have no Jones, Andersons, Johnsons, or Quins. These are white. They are speaking consistently that their school's government history and culture are Indian. They claim that English is a foreign language. What they fail to see is that if the Indian doesn't know what the culture, history, government, philosophy, or the religion is, who does? Using the system of interpretations of Indian pictographs, the white man taught the culture that is now being used at the University of Mexico City. The system being used is the forgotten languages of Persia and Egypt, not of the Indians, which has not been given to the world. For I have read some of these writings and have compared them to what I learned as a small Indian boy. English or Spanish, it is the white man's way. This type of Indian will not protect tradition, culture, heritage, or Indian lands because he does not know them. Throughout most of Latin America, this Indian is used to murder and slaughter the cultural Indian. In Alaska, Canada, United States, and Mexico, the legal identity of the cultural Indian is nothing. In fact, in Mexico, where most of the population has Indian background, the cultural Indian can be no more than a beggar in the streets. Currently, the country of Mexico is using the Indian background of the people to win an election because they know that the cultural is getting ready to go to war. In fact, the whole hemisphere where there are cultural Indians no longer plans to live in peace. Why? Because what is happening in Brazil, Peru, and Colombia to the Indians has reached their ears. Because of finances, I am unable to travel to other countries, but look around some of the remote places in Alaska. I've got my hands full just around what is happening in the United States. This much I can say, the cultural Indian has good reason for being alarmed. This is why the following studies can be a guide as to what he should look for. But getting to the types of Indians trying to speak in place of the reservation Indians, we now have people who had discovered that they are Indians, along with those that have left the reservation or are trying to find their way back. They are Indians during bad times who never suffered the identity of this name. They know even less about the problems. They feel that it's not being run right, so they would like to take it over. If after 400 years, the Indian who maintained his culture, both in North and South America, surviving the best genocide programs of the white man 
has and is using the best method there is in defeating the enemy, then to change it would defeat the very culture everyone is trying to protect. Why try a white man's method when it has failed? An Indian that is an Indian is not lost or trying to find his way. He knows who he is and knows who the white man is. He is different and separate from any of the intellectual systems in this world, yet he understands both civilizations. He knows and understands the way of life of the Indian and also be a better person than the white man in his own lifestyle because his civilization has had 18,000 years to perfect the idea handed down through generations. Have you ever seen a reservation or a blanket Indian, the first generation? I'm that Indian sent out to find a way to eliminate this problem. Many of my activities are outside this culture and being a member of the Eagle Clan, anything outside of practicing this culture is outside the ritual, which is basic Indian law. I would be the last person to interfere with anyone who has learned the truth of the white man's way of life and wanted to find the true way of peace. But I will never listen to people who have read all the books written by the white man on Indian lore or written by stereotype Indians hoot or holler around the bonfire. I will never humble myself, become an honorary Indian decreed such by a Navajo, Hopi, or any other tourist chief. The dictates of my conscience will not allow me to do this. This is where the red skins and the white eyes differ. A briefing. Who is an Indian? Plus one quarter or more Indian bloodline. Enrolled with an Indian nation, which has a treaty with the United States government. Has interests or owns trust or restricted lands. How are Indians classified? Reservation Indian. Lives on a recognized reservation subjects to laws and customs of that particular nation, not subject to state or other local laws. Urban Indian has lived or not lived on a reservation, but has an enrollment number for a particular nation, subject to state or other legal laws. Is the Indian a citizen of the United States? Urban, he is called a citizen but has no major legal rights. He does vote, he can get a passport, he pays income tax, but he is still a ward of the government. He cannot get title to his Indian land or his share of money from the tribal trust fund. He cannot contest these matters in a court of law. Reservation. No, he is not a citizen of the United States. He is a citizen of his Indian nation. It requires special congressional action for him to bring his case before a United States court. All of his rights, property, money, health, education, welfare, citizenship, sovereignty, trade, development, are held in trust by the United States. His life is totally controlled by the Bureau of Indian Affairs under the Department of the Interior. Outside of his reservation land, his nation is not a sovereign nation in the eyes of the United States government. Therefore, the reservation Indian is a citizen of nothing. Absolute power of the Secretary of the Interior. Acts for the President by authority of Congress. Is authorized to manage Indian affairs and all matters arising out of Indian relations. Continued absolute power of the Secretary of the Interior is given wide discretionary powers in meeting the obligations of the U.S. government to its Indian wards. His actions in exercising these powers are not subject 
to review by the courts, and the courts cannot control these actions by writ. Keeps all records on the Indian to birth, education, census, health, welfare, marriage, medical, death, and death records, yet is not obligated to produce copies of books, records, maps, etc. in his custody, if he feels it is not in the best interest of the government to do so, can disqualify and exclude any agent or attorney representing an Indian before the Department of the Interior if the attorney or agent is judged to be not competent or of poor moral character, not complying with all department rules. How is the Indian educated? Over 30% attend federal schools. Over 60% attend public schools. 6% attend mission or other schools. And 4% attend no schools.